there, it's Victoria with Take the Lead. Um, I just wanted to give you a little insight um, and, and hopefully give you a little advice in case you're struggling with some behaviors with your dog, uh, especially if you have multiple dogs. It takes time, it takes practice, and you've got a dog who has had bad habits for a little while, and it's going to take some time and some convincing for you to be able to really show your dog that things are changing. Um, so don't be discouraged if it's taking time, if it's taking a lot of time, if you feel like you're not getting anywhere. Put the time in in the beginning. Lay that foundation. Make sure your dog is really doing well in low stimulating environments before you start just pushing them into really stressful or really distracting things because that's a lot to challenge your dog with to what you know where you're trying to get them. Um, we really need them to focus on tasks that we're trying, you know, whether it's not growling, whether it's trusting us, whether it's keeping eye contact with us, not looking at another dog, it's a lot more difficult when there's a lot of distractions. Doesn't mean you can't get there, but it means you really need to lay it on heavy and thick and have some bomb-proof stuff when stuff is pretty calm before you can start adding distractions. You want to make sure that your communication when things are calm is crystal clear, that there's no question that your dog knows exactly what you want, because when you bring them into a higher distraction environment, and you start challenging them and then using the same language that you were using before, whether it's physical uh, body language, whether it's verbal language, whether it's spatial pressure, whatever it may be, the dog really needs to know exactly what that means and not have any kind of confusion because it'll make your job a lot harder if your dog isn't understanding and your dog will get frustrated at the process because they don't understand what you're asking of them. Um, and a big distraction, believe it or not, like let's say you have two dogs, um, would be training one dog and having your second dog in the room, you know, especially if they're like good buddies, they like to play, or if they're having some issues with each other, that's really distracting. You need to train one dog at a time, yeah, separately, one-on-one, -on -one, because each dog needs to realize that you are the key of information, regardless of if you're telling dog number one something or dog number two. So having both dogs in the room, you know, when they're not at that point yet where, where they're not, you know, if they're struggling, if you're, if you're trying to work one dog and the other one's falling apart at, the, at their obedience commands or whatnot, um, you've moved too fast. So just take a step back. Break it up. It's a process. It takes some time. It took some time to develop the bad behavior, so it's going to take a lot of time to get rid of them. But if you're dedicated to this process, you're thinking like a dog, you're thinking like a dog trainer, and you're really working on your dog lifestyle, you'll get there. You really will. Just keep working at it. Keep applying yourself every day. It takes time, but you will get there. As long as you're putting in the effort, you will see some reward. Thank you so much.